Hello everyone. I hope all of you are surviving the blizzard. Uh, though I am recording this before the blizzard, so it's entirely possible that we have no blizzard, which would be unfortunate. Uh, and not fun at all. Anyways. Juniors! The new deal. Not the old deal, it is quite new. And it is going to solve, hopefully, the Great Depression. Uh, not everyone approves of it, as you can see from this picture of Franklin Delano Roosevelt signing into uh, action some legislation. Uh, look at that guy in the background, he's looking fairly grumpy. Uh, the guy in the front looks suspicious. Uh, got kind of a smile by the guy behind him. But New Deal, it's really meant to end the Great Depression. <coughs> so where are we? Unemployment. This is a graph of unemployment in the United States. So starting in 1929, where we have the cra uh, crash of the stock market, uh, unemployment rises very quickly to above 20%. So one out of every five people in America has no job, nor even uh, an opportunity for a job. So things are going fairly poorly. And so it brings us to the election of 1932. And as you can see, uh, the blue of FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, is overwhelmingly apparent, and he wins in a, a fairly convincing manner. People are upset with Herbert Hoover, so Roosevelt really wins handily, saying that he's going to make changes. So Franklin Delano Roosevelt becomes president of the United States. Um, if you are counting, which I doubt you are, he's the second Roosevelt, um, distant cousin of good old Teddy Roosevelt. The Roosevelt family has been a long-standing family in American politics, and he serves in the New York State Senate. He's the sec Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Um, but 1921, he is stricken by polio, um, which, if it doesn't kill you, it leaves many of the people that suffer from polio um, with especially various physical ailments. Um, so FDR, for the most part, is paralyzed from the waist down. Um, so he survives polio, but he's really left uh, resilient, which helps as a president during a time where resiliency is needed. Um, and this really spells the beginning of power for the Democratic Party. Democratic Party historically uh, has a lot of support when it comes to unions, so for workers, um, it has a lot of support in cities and uh, minority groups, racial minority groups, religious minority groups. Um, it has a lot of support among African Americans, um, a lot of Southerners, Southern whites, um, and for the next considerable amount of time, um, this is really the beginning of power for the Democratic Party. They have six, seven of the next nine presidents. So from 1933 to 1969. And it's also, we're going to get to the term liberal, uh, and which kind of arises from people that support this New Deal and people that do not. Whether people support a New Deal or not, most people acknowledge that some change needed to happen in the United States. Um, and in his inaugural address, FDR makes a famous uh, saying or phrase which you will see in this video right here.
All right, so we have FDR, his famous, there's nothing I fear but fear itself, quote. Um, and he's uh, acknowledging that there's there's problems, but there's also things to be happy about. Um, but he's, at the end of his speech uh, for his inauguration, uh, he makes it very clear that he's going to do whatever it takes to make changes. Um, and this is a quote from the end of it. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but if you look at the very bottom, I shall ask the Congress for one remaining instrument to meet the crisis, broad executive power to wage a war against the emergency, as great as the power that would be given to me if we were in fact invaded by a foreign foe. So he's relating this economic crisis to really, especially if it was a military crisis, if we were invaded by a foreign foe. And he's going to wield this executive power. Um, and we're going to look especially to see if you know he had the right to do that or not. So FDR, he comes in and he has this new deal. It's a new deal for the country is what's going to make the country better. And it's broken down into the three R's. The first R is relief. He knows that people don't care about a lot of things. They want food in their bellies. Uh, and something to do. They want a job. So th the relief programs uh, is the first category, and it's really a quick fix. It's a way to get people back on their feet. It's not intended to last long. It's it's There are these programs that are really just meant to help people where they are at that moment. The second category of programs that he puts into place are recovery programs. Recovery programs, they are intended to last... Uh, a bit longer. It's uh, meant to return the economy back to normal levels. So it's whatever programs are going to help bring it back to a time before the Great Depression. And finally we have uh, reform programs. And reform is meant to change whatever this financial system was to prevent a repeat of the Depression. It's meant to change the way the government, the economy was structured so that something like this Great Depression cannot happen again. And whenever we have class next, we will be looking at different programs that fall under each one of these three categories.